Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of All Brother, a podcast about Salford slash Manchester's legendary musical institution, The Fall. Each week, we invite along a guest to chat about their experiences and memories of the group. As you probably know by now, we consist of me, Paul Hanley, and my brother, Steve, who was a member of The Fall for 20 years. You can find us at all the usual suspects, but we're hosted at play.acast.com forward slash s forward slash All Brother. In this episode, we're speaking to Simon Wollstonecroft, who shared a stage, the studio, and the odd hotel room with Steve for more than 10 years. So as you'll see, they have lots of shared memories. Hope you enjoy it. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Old Brother, the Fall Podcast, or a Fall Podcast. I get told off by Steve for saying the Fall Podcast. There's more than one, as we'll find out in a minute. Um, so with me, Paul Hanley, and with my ever-talented brother, Stephen Hanley, and we've got a guest this week who, he did a fair bit of time with you, Steve, didn't he, I think? I think we did, yes. Man and boy. Yeah. So without further uh, ado. Uh, just Can I just ask you, Paul, are we going to have any guests on who weren't the drummer? We've only had one. <laughs> we've only had one. <laughs> this is only the second drummer we've had on. Well, there has been a few. With, uh, <laughs> our guest this evening is uh, Mr Simon Mustercroft, who was the drummer uh, sort of after me. It went sort of me and Carl... Then Carl, then I came back for about 10 minutes, and then it was you on it, Si, I think. Yeah, it was. Hi, Paul. Hi, Steve. Nice oh, to see hi. you. Yeah, uh, nice to see you, I, got, I joined the band in 86, uh, replacing Carl yeah. during the summer, and um, I felt very lucky, you know, right from the off. I thought I joined at a good time. You did? For the band. I'd, I'd listened to This Nation Saving Grace, uh, which came out in 85, I think. Yeah, that was a that was the album that I learned and really got into and decided that I really liked the fall because up until then they'd sort of passed me by at school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, seventy seven, seventy eight. There was a kid who used to come in, Andy Wake, and he'd bring in Roach Rumble, a single, and a couple of others, and he wouldn't let you touch him. He used to <laughs> cover these records. It was unbelievable. He said, "Let's have a look then." No, no, it's it's <laughs> away from you, you know. What did he bring him in for? Him. Pardon? What did he bring him in for if you wouldn't let, him, let you look at him? No, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was, I was before we yeah, get to the fall, a, I was, I was going to ask you about the weeds before we get onto the fall. They were a great band. Yeah, well, if it had not been for, uh, for the weeds, I'd never join the fall. Um, after I turned the Smiths down, I joined a band called The Weeds, which was Johnny Mars' hairdresser. Yeah. Now, Johnny Mar, um, they used to go and get their hair cut under the Hacienda stage in a salon called Swing, run by Andrew Berry. And uh, Johnny introduced me to Andrew. And he said, That's a small world. That's a small world, isn't it? Because we kind of grew up with Andrew Berry, didn't I know we? you did, yeah. 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 Just down the same road, pretty much. Mm. Right, yeah. Was, same yeah. Same schools. And- All right. Yeah. Um, he was hairdressing. He was doing all the um, pop stars in Manchester, you know, the Bernard Sumners. Yeah, the Morrises. Um, you weren't short of a haircut in the weeds, were you? Because because you had Nick Arojo as well. He's a hairdresser as well, isn't he? Who is Nick Arojo? Yes, he's a, he does. Uh, he used to do the colouring down in the swing salon. Yeah, and all the bands would come in. You see, before they played the Hacienda, get their hair cut if they fancied. Yeah, and never offered it us. Never offered it me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we started this group, the three of us, and uh, we did some gigs with the four. Mark, obviously, I think he got his hair cut. He was another one, Andrew did. <laughs> and he invited us, and we went up to Scotland, uh, to Aberdeen, I think, and Glasgow, and Edinburgh, possibly. Right. They'd have loaded gigs down London. This was 85, and... Uh, I think. Well, cut a long story short. <laughs> I think. I think you were. The, didn't the weed support us in Brighton that night after we'd had all that equipment stolen? Which I don't remember playing Brighton supporting no. the fall. No. I saw you with at the international supporting the fall. I think. Yeah, I think we did the international one. Yeah. Yeah, it was a uh, Bristol, um, London, a couple in London, but anyway, Mark. <laughs> He decided he didn't want Carl in the band anymore and uh, asked me, you know, in the back of the, uh, well, in the front seat of the transit van, Salford Van Eyre, this is, do you fancy um, joining the band? Um, you know, I want you to play drums. I've been watching you play with the weeds. So that's how I ended up getting in right. with the fall. So did you know Carl was on his way, Steve, or was that a surprise to you? Uh, there was a lot of 
animosity between Bricks and Carl. They never, they never really got on. Right. So, and then Carl. Well, he went walkabout, didn't he? For a bit. He went walkabout. He let us down on a couple of times, yeah, when things were happening, gigs and recording. Who played the gigs then when he couldn't do them? You <coughs> Yeah, that was me, that. That was Paul. Yeah. Right. So, the the that last was, one. That was in 86, yeah. That would have been 86, yeah. The last one I did was that one in Liverpool with the Smiths and New Order for uh, Liverpool Council. That was the last gig I ever did with the fall. But Carl came back after that. Okay. Well, I went, the first thing I did was, uh, ju- well, a, a tour in September, wasn't it, Steve? To go to America. Yeah. That year. We used to go at September time, didn't we? Mm. You know, most years, as opposed to earlier in the year. So, yeah, uh, it was great. Loved it from the off. And... Uh, just you know that first album we recorded, Ben Simmons. Was your, what was your what was your first gig then, Si? It was um, it was Bo- Lee's, Lee's Cliff Hall. I think Folkestone, in, Lee's Cliff Hall, yeah. Folkestone, Lee's Cliff Hall, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> right. Yeah, not far from uh, the Bournemouth place where the Bournemouth runner stole the backdrop. Yeah, from. I remember it because it was a, it was the only <laughs> the only time I've ever snapped a bass string. Did you? Was that gig, your first gig? Oh, oh, which one was it, the thin one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell you what, Danny Noel will be on. If you get it wrong, he'll be on the, on that fall website next week. He said he snapped but, the juice thing when but, he was uh, I can remember it was Colin started working with us, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. And he came on stage and changed it while I was still playing. Oh, How did he do that? Skill, <laughs> Didn't you have a spare bass then, Steve? How come we was changing the string up on oh, the floor? I, I don't know. I, I mustn't have. I mustn't <laughs> have had one. That's ridiculous. Mm. Think, yeah, you used to. Later on, you did, though, didn't later you? Later on, I did, yeah. I had, I had a few, but at that time, I don't know. don't know. I mustn't have had a spare bass. That must we, have looked we, ridiculous. Were you playing that uh, Rickenbacker bass at the time? No. No, it was... Uh, Black and white one you had for a bit, didn't you? The blue one. Mm-hmm. I Did think like it was it? just. I think it was a precision. It was a precision. I think. Oh, right. Anyway. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's Ben Sinister, which is the. I think that's the what we're both on that. I'm on one track on that. I think. That's the only one we ever picked. The only record we both appeared on. I think so. Is Ben Sinister. Yeah, Ben Sinister. Um, which which was your track you played? Um. Oh God. Um. <laughs> Dr. Faustus. Dr. Faustus, I'm on. Right, yeah. Da, 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 yeah, good riff, that. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's one of my favourite albums still, that one. Right. They, this this Nation Saving Grace is my favourite one of all. Yeah, I, I really like that. That's a great album, isn't it? Really good. Yeah. 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 The, the thing to remember about This Nation Saving Grace is Steve didn't get any credits on it because he didn't write any of it, did he? That's why it's so good, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Bombast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, good one. It yeah. is a good song, yeah. <laughs> Did you only get one, one credit on it, Steve? One, so, yeah, because it, it, it was all written when I, I was uh, on my like paternity leave when I had that thing. Oh, was so, it? Okay. Yeah, they, they wrote it all then. They were so busy at that time, just ridiculous. They did so much in them few months. Yeah. They'd, like, toured America, toured Britain, wrote that album, had two singles out. Blimey. That's enough, isn't it? Keep yeah, going. Simon. What did you think about all the about the? So it must have been fairly recent then after you joined when the play started. Yeah, it was. It was only about three months later. Blimey. Um, well, was well, it really only three months? Yeah, it was later. Uh, Eighty six in the autumn. Mm-hmm. We did a UK tour. This is after we've been to America. Yeah. I just thought, wow, you know, what's this? Well, I just went with it. Um, yeah. Hey, Luciani. Which, you know, for people that don't know, um, yeah. Mark had re- read a book called uh, In God's Name by David Yallop, which was a bestseller. I'd never read it myself, but it was kind of, um, it was implying there was a lot of skullduggery going on when John Pope Paul I uh, passed away very yeah. quickly after he became the Pope himself. It's the same plot as Godfather Three. <laughs> it is. It's, it, they do it in that as well. Same thing. Same kind of. Although I think Godfather Three flows a little bit better than Luciani. I think. Yeah. 
you know, um, it was it was exciting to be doing it down in London. Yeah, um, I bet. Didn't really know what was going on half the time. I don't think anybody <laughs> did. No, and uh, it's a shame nobody's got a film of it. You know, mm-hmm. it must have been somebody who took a film. Surely. It's, in, it's, in, it's you know, quite a It's quite incredible that nobody's got a film of it, really, isn't it? I mean, like, it's like it feels. I mean, because this film pops up of everything these days, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, people, uh, they didn't have video. Yeah, they did have video. Cameras, yeah, they did, yeah. They, they, they were coming in then, I think. So by the time you did the play, was was Marcia on board by then as well? Uh, Simon Rogers had gone, had he? No, Simon Rogers had moved on. A, he'd stopped playing live and he'd moved on to production. Right. But he was really involved in the play. He was, yeah, the, he the was, music, yeah. Yeah, he was running it all from the side. Right, OK. Did he perform in it, Simon Rogers, Steve? No, he, I think he was just doing all the, you know, was putting the, the sound effects in and fading everything in and mixing right. everything. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, Marsh dressed up as a, uh, an Israeli commando. Well, I mean, I it's a, um, central to any any film about uh, the Pope being knocked off, in it? An Israeli commando. I mean, it's the first one you cast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody yeah, was in uh, that. Was uh, so. Um, who, else, who was else? Uh, Al Pele was in it. Alana Pele was yeah. in it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, Michael Clark was in it. Um, what's his name? Lee Bowery. Lee, Lee Bowery. Lee Bowery was. Uh, yeah. 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 He was, was really quite, good. He re- quite a cast of characters, wasn't it? It was. It was. Yeah. Lee Lee Bowery was great because um, we had a couple of speaking lines, didn't we, Steve? I don't know what, sorry. We had a couple of lines, didn't we? As well as playing yeah. in the band behind the actors, yeah. we actually got up in costume. You were the Pope, weren't you? I was I the was Pope a... at the end, but I had this other part as a, some kind of office worker. Oh, I don't I remember sat... that. Yeah, I was sat at this typewriter and I had to read these lines, I had to say these lines. Yeah. Again? So, uh... Can you remember? Again, central <laughs> to the plot, the office worker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it last then to play? Did it? How long did you do it for? Did it for three weeks. Did twenty one nights oh, yeah. over four weeks. We'd have one night off a week. What theatre was it on? Riverside, Riverside. Theatre. It was where they um, where they uh, filmed um, Three Five Friday. Oh right, okay. Yeah, right by the Thames, behind the Hammersmith Apollo. Right, yeah, it's good round there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was yeah, sold out then, wasn't it? it did well. Right did it next to the river? Did it do good numbers or? It was sold out every night. Why me? Yeah, well, yeah, and all the uh, broad sheet j- uh, <laughs> j- uh, journalists came down to review it, didn't they, Steve? But they didn't. Trying to make head and a tail of it, yeah. No, <laughs> they were perplexed, weren't they? I'm Mark not surprised. Down with his riding boots on and a, and a crop. <laughs> <laughs> Big time film director. <laughs> <laughs> so then the, the next album was Friends Experiment, was it? Was that the first, the next album after Ben Sinister? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So that was Amazing. Victoria, wasn't it? The single. Yeah. Is that about yeah. then? Yeah. The, the first yeah. single um, I got on was um, Mr. Pharmacist. Oh, of course. Yeah, I forgot about that. Which we did at Abbey Road. We spent about a week down there. Um, really loved the place. There was a vibe to it. There's no doubt. I can imagine. That hall. You know, acoustically and everything. Great room, wasn't it? That. Yeah. It's, it's really the, good. The number working. two. Working. There must have been some money about in them days. If you had a week in Abbey Road. Well, uh, Duran Duran came and had a look, didn't they? And then, yeah, uh, they did. While we were playing, Blimey. we see him walk in, chatting to uh, John Leckie, probably, the producer. I don't think Mark was impressed. I wasn't a massive fan of him, really, Duran Duran. I was a bit of a yeah. fan. I was a bit of a fan. Simon LeBon come in and uh, another one out of the band and a couple of minders. <laughs> Right. Just have a look. I don't think they've been before by the looks of things, otherwise they wouldn't have come in. And, uh, yeah, it was great. Right. Uh, so Victoria was the next single I played on. Yeah. Like I said, that was a bit of, bit of budget there, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we, we recorded that in Manchester, didn't we, Separate on a separate occasion? Yeah, that, well, that came out on Friends Experiment as well, didn't it? Mm. Um, mm. Which studio in Manchester was it, Steve? Oh, what studio was that? It wasn't Pluto, was it? It wasn't Pluto, go- no. That's where we did There's a Ghost in My House, which was mm. dead chuffed about recording because uh, I loved the song and my mum had it, you know, when I was a kid. 
So I knew the arrangement and everything. Right. So it's really good, yeah. One of my favourite uh, album, Friends Experiment, to be honest. Why is that? Uh, not Any... a lot of, you know, I like Brem and that. So that was good when we used to perform it live. Right. We'd go on for ten minutes. I don't think it, I don't think it's the strongest of Fall albums, is it? No, not at all. But which is which is funny because everything was there. Like you say, the money was there. Yeah, the studio time with that was that, uh, and and we were all like contributing songs, but I don't know. There's something that didn't quite come off with that. Yeah, uh, it's just a, the vibe around the band, perhaps. I don't know. Um, it... Bricks and Mark were still together, weren't they? Yeah. Mm. I mean, you were incredibly uh, busy then, though, weren't you? Because I was going to say the next thing. God, you... Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was that. Maybe it was because we were so busy. Yeah. Yeah, but, could uh, have been. Because the next thing you got is the ballet, innit? Yeah, uh, yeah. the next yeah. year, but, about a year later. But you, so if you look at all that work that we did in them three or four years, it was just full on. It, yeah, maybe something suffered with the mm. with just being so busy and touring America and doing the play and the ballet. I suppose something had to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark did concentrate a lot on uh, writing for the ballet. You know the music and everything, because remember when we were on tour, he always had his dictaphone out, which went everywhere, <laughs> including, including behind the city when we were talking about it. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Statute of like, limitations yeah, hasn't run out on that. We can't talk about that yet. But that, I mean, that was a lot more successful than the play, wasn't it? The ballet that was pretty. Oh yeah, the ballet was just something else. I think no, that was the. Got to be up there with the highlights of me being in that band. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so good to work with them people. We, we went to Amsterdam with it. We opened with it, didn't we? Mm. Then Sadler's Wells. Was that three weeks as well? We did. We did two nights in Amsterdam. Then we went to Edinburgh and did five. Right. And then we went to Sadler's Wells. Yeah. Christ Almighty! That I mean, that if you're talking about prestigious ballet places, it's not getting much better than Sadler's Wells, are you? Christ. No. Well, we. We saw a Kevin Rowland, didn't we, in the booze the next door? Is that Harlequin? <laughs> <laughs> in his skirt. Yes. Did he come? Yeah. Did he come and see it? Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Blimey. Kenny Lennox came as well from the Arithmetics. So Bloody I hell! See it. Yeah, Christ. I believe so. I mean, I'd, so yeah, I'd never, I'd never known anything like it really. No. Never been to a ballet before, and uh, but you've got to admire that, you know. Uh, Michael Clark and his company, they were brilliant. They were fantastic, yeah. You know, real athletes. They were, they yeah. Um, they used a click track for the first time, which Mark didn't like using, but um, the, the ballet dancers needed it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, of course, yeah. Spot on. So uh, that was a good experience. I bet it was. Just learning to play with Yeah, the it had to be so tight. It had to be exactly the same every night, didn't it? Which was something the four weren't used to doing. No, they weren't, no. Yeah, the song had to be the same length and the same speed. and the... Must have been interesting to do, though. Must have been amazing. Yeah, it really was, yeah. yeah. It yeah, was great. It's it like two 45-minute sets. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, we were staying in uh, Earl's Court, weren't we? Mm. The band, that is. And uh, bussing home at the, on a Saturday night after the show, coming back for Monday or Tuesday, I think. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it was, yeah, it was good. Had a good laugh. Got yeah, up in Edinburgh. Um, I mean, that was theatre. It was in Edinburgh. Yeah, well, that was kind of the height of March creativity, would you say? Because I mean, it must have took a lot of work to write. Because he was involved in the writing of that as well, wasn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, oh that... yeah, he put a lot of work into yeah. that. He's very proud of it. I bet he was. I bet he was. Next, where we're oh, extra cake was after that, was it? Uh, after after Franz and uh, Curious Orange. Well, we, had the, well, we did the Curious or Orange album. We did the album of it in, in Rochdale. Right. So, yeah, Sweet 16. Yeah. Was it Sweet 16 by then? It, was, it, it wasn't Cargo anymore? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. It was. Right. Yeah, uh, Joy Division had recorded there, hadn't they? Yeah. Uh, to, yeah. Everybody nice. recorded there. Yeah. Oh. So a, a lot of bands used it, but uh, Pete Hook had it, I think, when we went. Right. Sweet 16. But it was like the go-to studio. Your when first... we were back in Manchester, we needed to get a studio quick. First studio I was uh, ever in, that? Yeah. Yeah? So and then, but, so where, there was the same line that was Marsha, was it? Was, was um, Simon on that, then? 
Simon Rogers. Was he on the album? On the, he wasn't on the album, no. Right, so he'd gone by then. Because I, I was looking at down the list, and the next thing that happens is Martin comes back, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, for extra K, that's yeah. right, yeah. So had Bricks gone by then, when Martin came, I presume yeah, so? Yeah, Mark and Bricks had split up in the 89 or 90. Right. Um, Mark had moved to Edinburgh, um, you know, the Edinburgh man. Yeah. We used to listen to, uh, when we were on tour, MTV, it had a, an indie show on a Sunday night. Right. Which we'd try and catch, you know, if we're in a bar, because, you know, they'd have a TV in the bar or whatever, and we'd put it on that. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, we all rejoiced. <laughs> <laughs> so, I forgot what your question was. There wasn't one. Well. I'm just listening to you. There's no questions. Martin, Martin Brahma. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he came back. I had not met him before, but Steve obviously had. Yeah. Because he'd been in the band very early on. And uh, he's a great guitar player. Oh, I. Um, yeah. Yeah, he, he really is. And uh, I actually shared a room with him, as, as I remember it. Yeah, you know, a few places, but uh, as you, you know, he actually got sent home with Marsha <laughs> in Australia. And, okay. uh, you know, the, well, well, let's 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 go back a, a minute. Right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, from what I gather, he he got back in touch with Mark, and they were they tried writing songs together. Right. And and. Craig, obviously, Craig and I were pretty keen to get him back because we needed a guitarist, or well, we were looking for a guitarist to replace Bricks, right? And he was available. Yeah, but well, you, I think it was a bit weird for him. It must have been because you didn't really need necessarily have to have, to have another guitarist. You had a keyboard player, didn't you? You don't necessarily need two guitarists and a keyboard player, so. Well, so Craig, I was going to ask about that. Was Craig happy for him to come back? Yeah, Craig was really happy for him to come back. Yeah, All right. Yeah, well, so no... I don't want to speak for Craig, but yeah, no. from what from what my memories of it, but it must have been really odd for Martin to come back because he was obviously like, yeah. Well, I think that was, that was it was a difficult thing. I think that uh, obviously he was the founder member and to come back. As a working band, obviously with Mark in charge, yeah, must have been a bit strange. Yeah, yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah. So, do you like the album then? Do you like the album, Simon? Extra K, yeah. yeah. I think it's one of yeah. the better ones. Yeah, For, during my time, anyway. Um, yeah, and I like we like performing it live. Martin was great. Yeah, and I didn't really get to know him very well. Um, Biggest laugh we had. I, I can just remember things being really professional at that time. Oh, yeah. We were, on a major, night, yeah. we were on a major label and we were doing big venues and we were all sort of behaving, I think. So was that phonogram, was it? Yeah, and we were... we were. There was a kind of thing that, the, that you, you know, you are under a bit of pressure. Yeah. To... To keep it together and not, you know. Yeah. So was the money good then, Simon? Around that time? Yeah, it was. Um, when I joined in '86, uh, I said to Mark, "Listen, I'm, I'm training to be a chef out in uh, uh, Bolton, uh, a canteen. Yeah. Uh, I was earning about hundred quid a week. I said if you can match the wages uh, and give me a contract for six months." I'll join the band, <laughs> which he did. Yeah. And after that six months, I think, I don't know, we've got another record deal or something. I remember we were in Glasgow. Right. In the hotel, when Mark told us it was basically going to triple the wages, and it was a great wage. Bloody hell. Uh, really was. This is 86. Yeah, yeah. Still an all right wage now. Right. And... Uh, we got paid all that time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Martin, then you were saying you went to Australia with Martin and Marsha, and that that's yeah, when... we, oh. yeah, we did. We went, we did a what I call, uh, we went to America and Japan. Uh, Japan, that was my first time. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it, you know. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not that mad on fish, but. Uh, <laughs> <get on. laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it's a, you know, it opened my eyes a bit. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to go back there a few times after. Brilliant. But we went to Australia, um, and that's where Martin and Marcia got the boot. Right. The no, Martin did at first while we we're in Melbourne, I think, in the hotel. Uh, 
And the tour manager just said, right, here's your plane fare home. You know, you're off the gig. Blimey. Leaving Marsha, um, who was quite friendly with... Um, yeah. Oh, so I, 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 I was always really thought... really sorry for her, you know. Yeah, yeah. God, it was, God, you know, it was awful. Yeah, we went to uh, <laughs> New Zealand, to Auckland, yeah. and it pissed down, didn't it? Stick it mm. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> five days. It was when the World Cup was on when uh, Stuart Pearce booted the ball over the bar. Oh, right. The okay. Shootout. I remember that, uh, yeah. Yeah, with old Psycho there. Yeah. yeah, we were watching the matches in the middle of the night. Of course. Yeah, well, that's right, in that motel. <laughs> right. Blimey. But uh, I felt, yeah... It was terrible, really, for Marsha. But we went to see the Rotora mud pools, you know, went for a drive. We had a couple of eye cars, which uh, was good. Yeah. They seemed to be there forever. But I think we played at the town hall, didn't we? For, for a night yeah. in Auckland. Just looks like Wales, really. Yeah. Yeah. And loads of old Morris Miners and uh, yeah. Triumph Dolomites <laughs> who went about. <laughs> so I always thought Marsha and Martin went at the same time. So they, did they not know? No. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. There's no difference of opinion here. Did they, they or did. not? Yeah, they went both on at the same time, yeah, in in Australia. Well, yeah, just you before Marcia we went. Came, to... Marsha came with us, though, didn't she? And still did No, that, no. <laughs> no. They? What, was she no, doing no. in Auckland with us? <laughs> she wasn't. <laughs> she was, because I took her to the Rotor and Mud Pools, <laughs> me and uh, someone else. Right, I, OK. I said, Dave's Dave. He used to do the sound for the Sex Pistols. I think we've got, Dave Goodman. Well, we've got different memories of this, Si, but... Uh, yeah. uh, no, honestly. Uh, Dave Goodman. She d we definitely went to the road tour on mud pools in Geese. Uh, you know, one drive. Uh, it was about three three hours away. Just right. Just sort of cheer her up. You know, oh, here we go. Answers on a postcard here. Did yeah, Marsh and Martin, Martin leave at the same uh, time? Th then, we got, then we were supposed to go to Japan. That was right. Mm-hmm. And well, we did Martin, go to Japan. But Marsha and... Did Marsha come with us? No. Right, OK. So, that's, yeah, yeah, we got it the wrong way around, yeah. It was Japan after uh, Australia. So, hang on. So, still got to work this out. Martin went in Australia, but Marsha came to New Zealand. Is that right? She did. I'm absolutely 100% sure about that. But... So, mate, you, you sure you didn't go back to Australia and then Martin went, maybe? No, because of um, Marsha, I would have remembered because Martin would have been with Marsha had he still been with us in right. Auckland. Oh, OK, this is good stuff. All right, we'll have to he get Martin on. Uh, Marsha was. Right. <laughs> Went to the road tour. Well, OK, all right. Well, we'll have to get Martin on, see what he says, because he, he, yeah, he's been yeah, calling us for getting everything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then you got the, uh, the main man, Mr Dave Bush, didn't you, after that, after Marsha went? Yeah, I think we did. Um, we did. How do we get? How do we find Dave? Well, he was uh, as as all of us were. He was work. He did the driving for us, and he did the back line. Okay. Yeah, he started working for us. As, I don't know who got him in. Somebody knew him in Manchester, but he uh, started working as the back line technician. Did a few gigs with us. He's not from Manchester, though, is he? Yeah. Who is he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, he's from Spain. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He lives, lives over in Spain now. He's got a new life out there. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he joined so. the band. Um, he lived um, in Stockport, and we used to go around to his house. Uh, the next album, which was Infotainment Scam, I think. So, go, yeah. Hang on, we've not done Cold Selfish yet, have we? Right. Okay. Go, I was going to mention Cold Selfish. Because it's yeah. got's got your uh, the highest self penned fall single, highest chart position. Number forty it got to free range. Yeah, that's right. Um I wrote it on a um a Yamaha S Y fifty five keyboard. Wow. That Mark got old I bought for us out of loot and we went to pick oh, it. Oh, hang on a minute. Day uh, we've not mentioned shift work either. <laughs> oh right, okay. <laughs> Dave, well, said, was uh, in, Dave started getting involved on shift work. We did mention right, shift work because right. we mentioned Edinburgh, man. Anyway. We did mention Edinburgh. Yeah, we did. Mark moved to we Edinburgh. Shift work, yeah. Right. All oh, right, so Dave Dave came in after that. Okay. Dave sort of, Dave was working with us when we were going, yeah, we did that in Sheffield. 
and Dave was working with us and was doing bits bits of programming. Right. And uh, eventually... Yeah, that was at Robert Gordon's studio. Yeah. So is that a good album, Shift Work, do you think? Yeah, I think it was all right. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Not as good as Extricate for me, but better than Friends. It's definitely better than Middle Class Revolt. Right, OK. Which fun too, yeah. OK. So, <laughs> I was going to say about Free Range, because it's a great song. So you wrote that, did you, Sam? I wrote the uh, synth part, yeah. Right. Uh, on this keyboard that he got for us. Right. Uh, we took it up to Dave's, as I remember it, and we demoed the song in um, Deacon Blue Studio in Kelvin Grove in Stockport, big old beautiful church there. Why have Deacon Blue break, got a, stop, a, a studio in Stockport? It's Scottish, aren't they? <laughs> in Glasgow. He said Stockport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we ended up recording it in London, I think. Bloody hell! You're all over the we, place. We first recorded it at proper in the studio in um, Deacon Blue Studio. I think it was called Sava. Uh, gorgeous, it was. Okay, okay, mobile was it? <laughs> it's been it's been in <laughs> it's been, it's been, over the country. It's been in Stockport, Glasgow, and bloody London so far. It must be in a van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we recorded it in Brixton. Uh, <laughs> All right, okay. Oh, that's it. That is London, yeah. So speaking yeah. of speaking of mobile and driving around, that video for uh, Free Range has got to be one of the worst videos I've ever seen. You lot driving around <laughs> in that bloody truck. That was awful. That video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks yeah, bloody freezing. <laughs> we were freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, what, what, what was it we were in? Um, we sat in the back of a we sat in the back of a kind of jeep on a flatbed, which was a flat on the back of a flatbed truck driving around London. Right, yeah, around the city of London, uh, above the traffic, <laughs> freezing your bollocks off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you all look you all look dead miserable so, as well. Trying to do the part that the other band members do, yeah, when yeah, looking looking mean and moody, yeah. And Mark's miming's us appalling on it. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> I agree, yeah. Uh, so I was doing a bit of research in. It says here that after that album, Phonogram, it says that uh, Free Range was the highest self penned hit, and then Phonogram had to compensate the band for the early termination of their five album deal. So what was that about? Well, basically, they'd asked for a demo tape. I remember being in uh, Sweet 16 in Rochdale recording. The facts came through. And they said, right, we want to wear your demos, otherwise, you know, we won't re-sign you, basically. Right. And Mark just pissed off for not having them, we not do demos for nobody. And uh, it was terminated. Right. So, yeah, that's how that ended. Uh, yeah, I think there was a thing of, of that about us. They didn't like us doing an album every year. Right, right well, because, yeah, you were saying that the other day. So, basically, you were doing too much stuff. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Right. Well, I don't, I, I, and I think it wasn't what they expected. I, th I think Extricate did really well, then Cold Selfish didn't quite do as well, and then, I, I mean, uh, Shift Word didn't quite do as well, and then Cold Selfish didn't quite do as well as that. So <laughs> Diminishing returns. Yeah. All right. And so they're, they're thinking, well, we're not going to, we're not going to do this fourth album. Right. Without okay. hearing, without hearing it first, which is obviously totally opposite to how the four works. Yeah, right. Because we never, never did that. We never had an A and R man in the studio. Never. They basically got what they were given. Yeah, but there was never that thing of demoing in studios, was there? You know, like because you, you, you know, you see bands now, like you see Buzzcocks, and then when they release these box sets, there's like. Loads and loads of like demo versions of the next album that they're recording like slightly cheaper studios, just to so it must be just to show the record company what they were going to do. But that never mm. happened with the fall, did it? I don't think it never happened. No. Right. So then you went to permanent. Is, is that right? Is that the infotainment scan? Yeah. I was going to say about what I was going to say. About the infotainment scan's got the best cover fall cover version they ever did, and the worst. Can you guess what those two are? I can. <laughs> what do you reckon, Simon? Well, it's lost in music and I'm going to Spain. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what possessed 
Uh, Mark to do I'm Going to Spain. I know it was on that the worst Kenny Everett album, but Christ, and that, if there was ever a song on that album that deserved its place on the worst album ever, it's that. It's terrible. Yeah, on the other hand, Lost in Music, though. Brilliant. As I, think I, I say, I think, that's the, I think that's the best cover version The Fall ever did, I think. Yeah, again, I was dead chuffed that, um, you know, Mark had decided we're going to do that one because, yeah. you know, I'm really back in some of funk and soul. Yeah, but the, the so, $64,000 question is, that why wasn't it a single? I don't know. Was it in America, Steve, who brought it out? I'm not I think it did well come then. out as some kind of single. It was like an EP, yeah. All right. Yeah, because we were touring. Like a, it was definitely out on some kind of promo EP for the album. Right. But no, it wasn't like a proper single that we could get in the charts. No. Which is well, crazy. What, so what was the single off that album then? Well, I don't know. You'll have to tell me. I don't know. Uh, Glam, Rack, Glam Racket was it? I don't know. I don't think Glam don't Racket know. was a single either, was it? Maybe you, maybe you uh, didn't release a single off it. I mean, I could probably look it up. See, this will be Danny Noel telling me off again for not doing my research. <laughs> yeah. What was a single off that? Was it? I thought it was a single. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. In fact, I'm sure it wasn't a single. The music. It wasn't a single. No, I don't. I can't remember. I definitely saw a twelve inch in America though, on the American label. Uh, I think it was Matador Records. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, and then Simon produced that, didn't he? Simon Rogers. Um. Gordon, I don't know. Again. <laughs> Do you, mate? Uh, well, um, if I tell you, if I tell you what sack tracks on it, you can tell me what the single was. So there was right. uh, Lady Bird, Greengrass, mm-hmm. Lost in Music, Glam Racket, I'm Going to Spain, It's a Curse, Paranoia Man in Cheap Shit Room. I don't think that was a single, was it? No, no. <laughs> Service. No, none of them were a single. The League no. of Bald Headed Men. No. A past gone mad. Oh, we did do a video for the League of All Dead Men. Oh, yeah. Well, who did you play, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't look. I, I, I'm pretty sure Lost in Music wasn't a single, so it doesn't look like there was a single on it. Okay. Maybe there wasn't then. Yeah. But then. Um, good album, though. Yeah, well, it seems there's pretty good stuff on it. Oh, this why, why are people grudgeful? Was that a single? That was a single. Right, okay. Well, that's an additional track, CD only. But that was a cover, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was a single at the, off the Peel session. Right, well, that was a cover as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. So then, of course, we move on to Middle Class Revolt and the return of one Mr Carl Burns. Yeah, so- I'd gone on holiday with my dad to Tunisia for a week. Right. And... Uh, you know, basically got back and phoned Steve's, Steve's house up. His, his wife at the time answered. Said, where's Steve? Oh, don't you know? They're down in the studio <laughs> in, in in North Wales. I said, you what? I couldn't believe it. Um, <laughs> Christ. So I, tra- to tra- I don't remember this. I don't remember that. Do you not remember? It was just after you went to the mud place with Marcia. <laughs> A lot, lot later than that. Yeah, I know. Kindness. So, so they, they got Carl in because you were on holiday. Well, you, it serves you right for taking the holiday, sir. <laughs> no, yeah. because Carl, on that infotainment scan tour, Carl, uh, as we've said, he, he started off with that, that that pad, didn't he, that drum pad? Yeah, he did. He had a, a timbales, you know, yeah. tam- tambourine, shakers, a cymbal. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then the next gig he had like a snare drum with it. <laughs> yeah. and, the next, and then the next gig he had like a, the the pad and the snare drum and a floor top. <laughs> and then the next gig. <laughs> and the next gig he had like a, flo- a snare drum and a floor tom and a bass drum. <laughs> Where he was getting this stuff from, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> he seemed to sneak the two drummers back in. Right, you were never you were never mad keen on two drummers, Si, were you? No, not at all. Not when you'd end up packing his gear. At oh, oh, oh. At the end of the night. You've talked about that before, Carl. He would spend all day pissing about with that kit before a gig. You try to put to do anything with it after the gig, not a bleeding chance. No, yeah. that's right, isn't it, Si? When we toured America, he would. He'd spend all afternoon setting it up and messing with it. And- 
But then the end of the gig, you would be nowhere to be seen. <laughs> we poor old Dave, Bosch back in the bus, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He'd be crawling inside with uh, 50 kilo fly kicks. That's what I get him on. Hey, the glamour. So you got... Steve looked on. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the... No, but going back to middle class revolt, yeah, I, I found it, a shot down there, um, and it was middle of nowhere, near uh, Wrexham, out that way. And I could hear somebody on the drums and thought, it's Carl. And he was, he was playing on my drum kit. And I was kind of annoyed, but it was, it was the beginning of the end for me, really, 95. Right. And that album. And I didn't, I didn't rate that album at all, really. Right. No. So, it's but, not uh, one of the best ones. I, you know, I love Carl. Um, I'd love to see him again one day. Yeah. Uh, maybe he'll serve. But him. I always find that, I don't know if you find that side, man, but... Uh, the albums just reflect the band at the time, don't they? When the band's going through a good time, the albums are good. When the band's going through a bad time, the albums aren't good. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much the case, I think. And that wasn't a great album, no. No, it wasn't. And, uh, you know, I lasted another, well, another sort of three years. Yeah. Two or three years after that. But behind the so, Counter's pretty good, though, isn't it? That's a good song. Yeah. But, which one? But that was that yeah. was Carl's that was Carl's way back in that Mark. I think he met up with Mark, and Mark said to him, "Have you got any songs?" Yeah. The same as he did with Martin when he rejoined. He said, "Let's see what you've got." And yeah. Carl had behind the counter. Well, that's interesting. That because apparently, according to the to the single, the credits on behind the counter are Smith, Scanlon, Hanley. Yeah, on the album and on the al- on the single, it's Smith Cal Burns. They've got two different sets of credits. Yeah, yeah. Well, a funny thing. Well, that's nothing credit. unusual. That with a falls, is it? <laughs> no. Sometimes you, I, I get a credit. Didn't think I deserved it. Yeah. Um, and other times, where I put an idea forward, I wouldn't get a credit. You know. Right. Just sort of sort of giving credits out willy nilly a lot of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because we're getting wages, yeah. I'm not really that bothered, you know what I mean? Yeah. I oh, yeah. But that, that's the thing. You did at the time. You don't think anything of it, do you? Because no. Yeah. You don't think thing. You don't think people are still going to be listening to this twenty years later? No. 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 Well, I, I didn't think that they would be either, but they are. <laughs> right. So this is ninety. So we're getting on to ninety-five now. You're just you're just where you are at the time. You don't think that you know. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this is interesting. According to the press on Cerebral Coastic, which I don't think anybody likes, do they? It was all I think right. the, songs, the songs weren't too bad on that. I think the production is awful. Right, OK. Because Mark said that he, him and Carl had to go back in and re-record all the guitars after you'd gone home. Yeah. <laughs> Did Carl not have to re-record your drum sign, no? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! So it doesn't sound like things were very happy then. No, like I said, after for me, after a middle class revolt, it was all downhill and very quickly. Right. Two years, um, the money runs out. The VAT people on my back. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted out, you know, and I yeah. had up my daughter then uh, in '96. Right. So it just didn't make any sense anymore. I tell you what, you say that you 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 you. The beginning of the end was 95. It took you a while ago, didn't it? It was three years. Yeah. Well, yeah, two of which were getting wages still. Right, third, OK. Uh, it was coming in drips and drabs. Yeah, and then it just sort of fizzled out altogether. Right. I just wanted to get off, you know, and I did. Right. But, you know, uh, I saw Mark a couple of times after. Yeah. He was great, you know. I think he was a bit annoyed with me at the time. Yeah. Uh, when I quit, because <clears throat> I went to some sort of, you know... Um, Creditors meeting, whatever you call. Them. Yeah. And uh, just oh, thanks a lot. You know, I took you around the world. You know, and which you did. Of which course, you did, of course. Yeah. Circumstances have changed. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And then well, um, I've joined up with Ian Brown again. Yeah. Um, my old schoolmate. You were back to Japan again, then, were you? Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, the Mount Fuji Festival that was a big one, and uh, yeah, I played on one album, Golden Greats. Right. And I used my songwriting skills to co-write Gold, uh, Golden Gaze. Right. The single Vans, uh, which, you know, did okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. 
So, yeah, um, that's how it panned out for me in the end. Right. Shame the way it ended, though, really, wasn't it? Because, I mean, it was it was a bit of a decline by then. I mean, it, uh, you know, as as the story goes, it went down and then 98, it really kicked off. But then what what we've meant, what we've talked about with various people on this podcast is, is just how amazing it was that he got it all back again. You know, that last band were great. The American band, you mean? Yeah, and the one and the one after them as well. The last, okay. They're really good. I don't know if you know if you've heard much by them. Not a great deal, no. Um, I've heard stuff Spencer Birdwhistle played. On. Oh right, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure which album it is, but um, no, I don't really listen to a lot of it. You know, you don't. I, I like playing Free Range, which is um, the song, a remix of Free Range uh, that Simon Rogers, I think, produced. What album was that on? Free Range. Yeah it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, play that sometimes. Oh yeah, Free Range. You talked about that. That's it's the one with the Jeep, isn't it? Yeah. That's really good. That's a really good song, that. Yeah. That could have been a big hit, that, I think. Or oh, it should have been a bigger hit than it was. If it had had a better video, that would have been number one, that. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK, well, on that uh, note, we'll we'll call it a day. Uh, really nice to speak to you, Si. Yeah, nice to yeah. speak to you guys as All right, well. Take it easy. And, keep, uh, keep rocking. Keep yeah, playing. Indeed, you too. All right, mate. And we'll never get out All of the right, time. Have you got, so, you got so, something coming up? Uh, I've got a few gigs with San Pedro Collective. Great. Great. Uh, uh, which is uh, I've been doing for a couple of years. Uh, last single was called Time, uh, come out in January. So we're bringing another one out in uh, later in the summer. I was, I'm doing a gig at the um, Macclesfield uh, Christchurch, October 22nd. Okay. Great. Which Pete Hook's playing at. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be a great venue, that, yeah. Yeah, have you been? No, I've, I've seen all. Yeah, Pete Hook's done a lot there, hasn't he? Has he? So yeah. yeah, looking forward to that. Great. So hopefully, yeah, it'll all happen again. Okay, mate. We'll get back to what we're doing, what like doing. We'll have to get out for a pint when all this is over as well. Yeah. Okay. If you oh. get a table, you're on. <laughs> all right, mate. Definitely. All right, take care. See you, you soon. Too. Now, God bless. Cheers, cheers, mate. Cheers. Good to speak to you. See you, See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us again this week on The Old Brother Show. Episodes are released every second Wednesday, so watch for the next one in two weeks' time. Please follow us on Twitter, at Old Brother Show, where you'll find a link to Spotify and also able to subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher or RSS, so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, give us a rating on iTunes, or at least tell your friends about us. For further reading, you can check out our books, The Big Midweek and Have a Bleeding Guess, published by Root Publishers and available from all good bookstores. Hope to see you all again soon, and remember, if you're driving, take your car.